No one that will stay for your child like a mother, right? There's no one in the world that loves you that much as you love that separate like mother daughter over here. The love. <laughs> So it's, it's so true. It's so, so true. So it is an opportunity. I'll send, you could send your mother the, the prayer and she could pray it for you and in English or in Hebrew. So I, I actually did not send it. But I will that I'll never forget that we do this on, on this day of year, this special prayer. It's actually the Tvila of the Shla, a very holy man from hundreds of years ago that wrote this beautiful prayer for children. And the reason I'll never forget that on this day we say this prayer is because um, 21 years ago on this Hebrew calendar day was the day of my wedding. Mm -hmm. So I was at the Western Wall and my friend who took me right before my wedding um, actually handed me the, the prayer book and said, this is the time to pray for your children. So I thought to myself, like, I'm 20 years old, I'm getting married, I can't even imagine like children right now, but she said, pray for your future children. So, so it was kind of like this weird experience of like, okay, I'm going to get this together. If there's ever a day that has power, it's today. And that was the first time I prayed for my unborn children. So that is the day. And it's never too early, I guess, and never too late to pray for your children. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, well, if we, you know, I think we might have mentioned this that when you when someone has a, a daughter, if anyone is blessed to have a daughter, so when you hold that little baby in your arms, you're actually holding all your future generations, right? What? Kind of humbling to think, right? Is that is that yeah. not right? Very humbling, but that's that's really what it is. Like every single every single egg that she will ever have is already inside her at one second old, right? She's she's born and you're holding her and you're holding your future. Not so with with uh, with boys in that same way, but but there's actually a lot of differences between boys and girls and their spiritual capacity and all of that stuff. So so it starts from birth, right? Okay, hi guys, who's joining hi. us on Zoom? Hi Joyce. Hi. Hi. In another. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Julie, Julie and I keep. Yeah. Maybe, oh. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Julie, thank you. And actually the chapter that I'm going to be teaching today in our book, Everyday Holiness, is the chapter on, um, in Hebrew, we call it Nidzibut, which is generosity. So I wanted to tie it in because this is the energy in the air right now. And, and Julie, I mean, we go between being like it's the highs and the lows and like we ask and we're rejected and then someone, someone out of the blue gives. And it's like, it's an emotional roller coaster of being a part, just like being a fly on the wall in people's spiritual journeys towards giving. And it has been so emotional. Like we've been crying through it, right? We're just, we're blown away 
by this community. It's a very special community by the way people are reaching out. Like Sue is like, you know, Sue has her own page and Adrian has her own page. And, and Sue came in and she's like, I upped my goal. And, and <laughs> it's it's really, really amazing to be just just to watch what's going on. Because honestly, as I, I shared this morning, yeah, the ladies that just got back from Israel are like, they're rocking this. They're just rocking it in every way. Um, it is, it's, I, I keep saying, this is not about us. This is not about our little bubble over here. This is not about Deerfield. This is not about Chicago. This is seriously about the Jewish world. This is how, if we could hold up our little place, then the whole Jewish world is so much stronger. Right. It really, it's so clear to me. Like it's, if we think small, like we're, we're, we're missing the picture. This is about the Jewish world. This is about strengthening strength all around the world. Hold on. Someone's making noise. Joyce, I'm going to, I'm going to mute you. Okay, sweetie. So that is so, so clear to me. So we're going to jump right in. You guys ready? Yes. Question. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't know. I don't I don't know what video you're talking about. You're talking about the video from the trip? Yeah, you're so sweet. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, it's really who we all are. Um, yeah, I'll send it to you for sure. Okay, well, let's just start with a test, okay? Before we even start our class, yes? Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, so why don't you? Rivka, the daughter of Yaakov, mm -hmm. she should have an Aliyah Nishama, her soul should be elevated in heaven through all of our learning and all of our good merits and what a day for her to, to have today with, with all the amazing merit that's happening in this community. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let's just start with a little quiz, little test, okay? This is just between you and yourself, be very honest. It's a living and, sorry, a giving love assessment, okay? Let me just see how many questions I have. We're gonna do this real quick. I have 30, like about 30 questions, okay? So let's see, and this is you and yourself. If you have a piece of paper, you might wanna do like tick, 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 cross to make five, okay? If you have a pen and a paper, or you might just wanna count in your head, okay? Let's see where you fall. And this is between you and yourself, just to know where you fall and how much work you still need to do in this area, okay? Let's go. You ready? You guys ready? Pen or you're counting? Counting? Okay, but don't lose track. Okay, one, I feel comfortable, bra you ready? Okay, I feel comfortable bragging about someone. Bragging about someone else. Yeah, I want you to just, we're doing 30 questions. Let's see, let's just be honest where we, where we fall on this. Let's be really honest. Yeah, um, Julie has pen, paper, if anybody needs. Yeah, totally, totally. It's just a yes or a no. You guys got this. Okay, two, I feel positive when someone brags about himself or herself. I feel positive. I'm okay with someone bragging about themselves. Well, that... <laughs> someone wants to share, right? Your best friend's child just got into Harvard and your child didn't or whatever. You're okay with that. <laughs> You're okay with someone else's success. Yeah. Okay, three. Thank you. Thank you so much. And there's a bunch of pens. You could just do it on a little corner of your paper. Just, just if it's a yes, give yourself a little tick. You're going to count them up, okay? Number three, I feel positive towards someone else who is bragged about by another person. I feel positive about someone else that's bragged about by another person. We don't like that word brag. Insert your own word. I am happy for someone else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So one, two, and three. So you're comfortable with someone talking about themselves and their successes. You're comfortable when, 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 when he's talking about himself. And the third one is um, when someone else talks about someone's successes. You're okay. You are feeling okay with that. Number four. 
I give gifts without expecting others to feel obligated. Number five, I give gifts, gifts and do not remember I gave them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Number six, I give gifts to people who value them. Seven, I accept people who refuse to take my gifts. I accept people who refuse to take my gifts. I accept people who refuse to take my gifts. Number eight, I give compliments to others easily. Number nine, I express love easily and freely. Ten, I tend to remember only the good times. Eleven, when I give a gift, I do not expect to be thanked. Twelve, I express appreciation for the gifts other people give me. Thirteen, I try to give gifts that other people say they want. Fourteen, I give without telling stories about my giving. Fifteen, I like giving anonymous gifts. Sixteen, I feel comfortable when another person is getting all the attention. Seventeen, I give to needy people. Eighteen, I feel comfortable giving to myself. 19, I have a desire to give. 20, I give without complaining. 21, I like seeing other people have what they want. 22, I share the joy of other people who have good things I don't have. 23, I positively affirm the value of other people, their worth, their ability. 24, I feel full inside when I give. 26, I believe giving expands me. 27, I feel loving towards people who are needy. 28, I feel like I'm a good person. 29, I value myself. 30, I feel like a success. 31, I feel happy most of the time. I'm gonna keep going a few more. 32, I celebrate the good fortune of other people. 33, I try to show my best self at all times. 34, I support others who like and want praise. 35, I willingly reassure others who need it or ask for it. 36, I feel comfortable nurturing others. 37, I feel comfortable when others ask me for something. 38, I feel like I have a lot to give. 39, I feel a lot of joy when I give. 40, I give full attention to people who complain. 41, I love it when other people get what they want. 42, I give full attention to people when they are talking to me. I usually give full attention to people, just not Eve. Okay, um, 43, I give praise to God for my blessings. 44, I give myself good health care. 45, I like it when someone lets themselves be bragged about. 46, I always feel valuable and useful. 47, I give bless, I feel blessed to be able to give. 48, I give gifts to persons whom I don't like. 49, I am glad to be alive. And last one, 50. I praise God for the gift of life. Okay, so 
let's 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 um just I mean you don't no one needs to tell me how they did, but I think it's important for all of us to know where where we fall with our giving because. God put us in this world to become givers. We were born complete takers. And by the time we reach the end of our lives, we are supposed to have transformed ourselves, right? It's all age appropriate. Like it's normal for a two-year-old to be totally narcissistic, but a 22-year-old that can't see outside of himself, it's a problem, right? And as we get older, things become more clearer to us what life is all about, what their, what their con contribution is to the world. And as we go on through life, we are supposed to become completely givers. We're supposed to become givers. We're supposed to flip that, that going from a taker to a giver, okay? Things are supposed to transform. So generosity, okay? And we're gonna just open up this chapter, whoever has the book. You could join with me. I don't know if it's a different page, but I'm on page um, 150 in the book. Wait, is there a scale? It's, just it, like... it's like up to you. I mean, oh. if you like only had 10, chances are this is an, an area that needs to be worked on. Okay. So if, yeah, it's out of 50. If you have 25 and up, I would say you're doing okay, okay. right? I, it really, really depends on where you're at also in your life. If, if, if I had my 12 year old child here and they would get 10 or 15, I think that would be really good for that age. It really depends. I, I just like sitting in this room, I, I know the people in this room, people have been evolving over decades of their life in their spiritual journey. So I, I know without even looking at anybody, I know that some people got 40 to 50 checked because I just know that's, that's how far they are on their, on their journey right? It's not about them. It's so much bigger. So I just, I mean, was that telling for anyone that little exercise? Like do you guys kind of see like, okay, maybe I'm not so happy for other people. If that's a muscle that needs to be worked on, it needs to be built, right? We want to be happy for people, right? But really what it boils down to, if I could, my, my two cents is that if we can't be happy for someone else, there is, there is a hole inside of us. There's a little bit of insecurity that needs to be filled. Because, and and if, we, if we can't be happy that someone else has more than we have, that's a lack of faith on, on our part. It, it just means that we think we're, we're weak in our faith because it means, God, you gave me the wrong deck of cards. Hello, I did not get my part. I did not get enough, right? Where Pirke Avad, Ethics of the Fathers, teaches us that he who is rich what, what is it? He who is? He who is rich is happy with his lot, right? So, so it's kind of, it's all, it's a personal experience, right? Where am I really feeling? If I could be happy for someone else, that means I'm doing well. If there's holes that need to be filled, I mean, only you know that and only you can fill them, right? Sometimes I wait for someone else to make me happy, like a child, right? We know the saying. We, we spoke about this in Israel on our trip. We said, we're only as happy as our least happiest child, yeah. right? That is a bunch of BS. I mean, oh, if, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's, I mean, I say that a lot and I feel that a lot. If one kid is not doing well, I'm a mess. And really, is that, is that, is that, am I my child? No. Am I my marriage? No. Am I my, you know, my, my, and that hurt me or whatever it is. No, you need to find your inner strength that no matter what storm is happening around you, you are solid because it's you, this is you. You cannot change your environment. You cannot change your circumstances. You could only change your response to it, right? So it's just, it's literally like tethering yourself in faith and, and in self-assurance and just loving yourself. A lot of it starts from love like loving yourself, then you could love others, then you could love God, right? We spoke about that last week. Okay, yes, question. I'm gonna quote him a bunch now, yeah. There's a lot about his work. So Rabbi Dessler lived, I mean, do you know, do you know when he lived? But I would, I would say probably, 
a couple hundred years, right? Okay, so a couple hundred, yeah, yeah, not a thousand. The Musser, the Musser movement has been going on for well over a thousand years, but he's a more contemporary um, writer. And what's his work called? Is it Path of the Just? Strive for truth. Okay, so I'm going to quote him a lot, but yeah, he he really brings it to light in a way that is very tangible. So thank you, thank you for that. So so let me just start with with the story. Um, many of you are familiar with this book, right? Esther Jungreis, The Committed Life. If right, you Don, this is how we connected on our interview over this uh, teacher. But if anyone wants to do a book club on this book, it's it's one of my favorite books. It's an incredible book. We could we could learn it and read it together and discuss it. So. On her chapter on generosity, um, she starts with a story. And the story goes like this. She is in Brooklyn. She uh, Has anyone here been to Brooklyn, New York? Like, you know, the heart of like, the Jewish community. Yeah, you're from there. Okay. I'm, I'm like scared when I go there. Seriously, like the few times I've been there, I'm like scared. Like it is like so intense over there. Like what an intense like Jewish hub. Oh my goodness. So I don't know what it was like growing up, but if I go even just to shop, I'm like so intimidated. Like, am I allowed to come into the store? Is it okay? Like, so, so Esther Young Bryce, she's a Holocaust survivor, survived Bergen Belsen. She's a real like chutzpah, you know, like I, I like holy chutzpah, you know, like, like she just like move out of my way. So here she is shopping and fighting the traffic. Oh, four feet tall, but like move out of her way. Yeah, she was like, you did not want to mess with Robinson Young Bryce. She's a legend. So here she is fighting the traffic. She has her to-do list. She, best shopping, best Jewish shopping is in, Bur in Borough Park. So so she she's finding, she's like trying to find her way. And then finally she, she finds her parking space on 13th Avenue. And that's where all in the middle of all the shops. And she is, she gets out, she's walking. She's doing it, she's walking. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> she's doing her thing. And, um, and she sees on the side of the road, there's a woman kind of disheveled, not dressed very nicely, turban on her head, clutching an open pocketbook in her hand. And as people are walking past on this very busy intersection, she calls out, Sadaka, Sadaka. We saw that in Israel at the wall, like a lot of beggars, right? Charity, charity. So, um, even without thinking, her gut is to pull into her pocketbook and to put a few coins to, for, this, um, for this beggar. And because this is a pillar of Jewish life and it's something that Esther young says has, she grew up with that. Charity is like a pillar of, of everything. It all starts with, with giving. And it was before the high holidays and there's so much hub, you know, so much energy there. And so she just, without any efforts. And she even noticed that the children that were walking by on this busy street, everyone was giving, right? There's that energy because it's not, it's not a question. It's like, this is part of our life. We give, right? So she, the story goes on that she, she notices that this, um, this beggar, this woman, she, she kind of like had this expression on her face, like, okay, enough is enough. I need a break. And she, put, she closes her pocketbook. She leans against the building, the, the building wall, and she starts munching on some crackers. And then as she's just kind of like, she's not begging at the moment, she's having a snack, having a break. Another beggar walks down the street with, a, with, a, you know, with his hand open saying, charity, charity. So Esther is just watching this and she sees, you know, and, and you would think that's a competitor. Right, like, oh, we're gonna get afraid over here because scarcity model, right? We're not enough for everybody. But without missing a beat, this beggar lady who's on break from her from her task pulls into her pocketbook and puts a few coins in this beggar who's passing by. So that is that's really it's so beautiful, right? It's so simple and so beautiful. But no one is too poor. No one has nothing that they cannot give. Now the story goes on, this is, so let's take that story and take it 2000 years earlier in the times of the Gemara. So we have the story of Rabbi Akiva, the great sage, right? He became so great. He was a very simple man. And at 40 years old, he transformed his life and he found, he started studying and he started evolving. So the story goes, so his wife was the princess, the daughter of the richest man of that time, Kalva Savua at the time. And, and she gave up everything to marry this pauper who wanted to devote his life to studying Torah, 
right? So they were really living in poverty. She grew up in the palace. She grew up with everything and she gave it all up. So now God was testing them. So knock, knock on the door. And who was it? Elijah the prophet. You know the story? Elijah came to ask them if they had anything to donate. He was disguised as a beggar. And with his hand open, he, he looks around and he sees this little, this little, I don't even know what to call it, a hut with no possessions, no table, no chairs, nowhere to even sit. All there was was a little hay in the corner that was their bed. That's all. They lived on nothing but love and Torah. They were such ideal, bad, ideal. I don't even know what to describe it as. Like they just, you know, they pure intensity and devotion towards God. And that's all they had. So the, this Elijah, the prophet, clearly this is a test to really, really um, boost them forward on their, on their journey. He says, is it, would you be able to give me some of your hay? But they had nothing. So they were so excited to be able to give. They said, of course, and they gave him some hay and off he went. So they passed their test. And um, the question goes, what if they didn't have some straw, some hay? What if they had nothing? to give, right? It's a good question. Like this was obviously an opportunity for them to look around at their very, very humble, meager abode and still, still feel like they had the opportunity to give. Because if you think about it, even someone that is poor has the obligation to give, but let's not use that word obligation. Let's use the word opportunity. What, someone that's poor doesn't have the opportunity and the joy of extending what they have to someone else, that would be really unfair, right? No one is so poor as not to give. Now, what if they didn't have hay? What if they didn't have anything? What could they give? Or words of encouragement, right? Or a smile or right? Any, anything, right? It does not have to be something physical. In fact, so much of, of, of charity is giving of oneself, right? Do you guys remember? I'm gonna I'm gonna share what we learned in in uh, on in Spot. I think it was in Spot. We learned those five levels of of listening. Do you guys remember? Can we can we recall it? We spoke about it on on Shabbat, Barry. Um, and it's such a, it's such. A, do you guys do you guys remember? Do you guys because this was actually such a powerful lesson because really if, even if we have nothing and we're what does someone really really need? Yes, we want to help them and we want to give and we want to do such grandiose things, but. The greatest gift we could give another human being is connection. And the greatest gift we have is ourselves of really being there for another individual. So do you guys remember? So there's five levels. This is totally worthy of writing down. This is good stuff. This is gold. This is Neely Cousins, the teacher. She, she taught this to us and it is seriously, it could transform your life. Okay, do you guys remember? So the bottom level, the, the be, most basic level, you guys are going to have to help me because it's not like, yeah, interrupter. So that's like all of us, right? Um, at times, and some of us more than at times. <laughs> we're the interrupters. We hear someone, we're talking to someone, and before they can even finish their words, we've already jumped in. We have the fix. We have the solution. Okay. And this is right, Sue, you're really good at this, right? Well, I sat next to Sue um, at the spiritual spa last week, and she's like a running commentary. Right? <laughs> Sitting next to Sue is so much fun. <laughs> I knew she was gonna, I, I she, like, you know, the, the, the speaker is trying to like give across a message, but Sue's been learning so long that she's like, oh, I know what she's gonna say. I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> but Sue, that's why we're best friends. That's why. Okay, so the interrupter, I, and I just honest, by the way, if you are an interrupter, you know that you're an interrupter, okay? I know that I'm an interrupter. This is something that I need to really, really work on. So I'm just looking around the room. I know who you are, okay? I know who you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Next level. Next level. This is one that I forgot. Okay. Okay. Oh, this, this is a good one, but but honestly, Sue, this is, I'm also, I fall into this category also. You might see yourself there also. So this is the, you said the waiter. I would call it the waiting, right? Waiting, waiter, because waiter sounds like you're serving food. But waiting is like, you're waiting for them to finish so that you could jump in. You're not really, really listening. You're formulating your response, right? Which we totally, don't you see yourself there, right? Especially like, 
you know, you want something so profound to say, so you have to come up with your words, but, but the truth is you're not really, you know, I don't know why it is that we're so scared to take a pause and say, let me think about that and then respond. But for some reason, we want to be so like on the ball that the second they have an opening, they, they give you an opening, you're like, you're, you're barfing, like all your, you know, so yeah, it's a problem. Okay. So that's level two, level three, mirroring. Okay, which is very therapeutic approach. Like when you, you pay someone a lot of money. Did we talk about this last week, by the way? No, no, we didn't talk about this. So it's, we pay someone a lot of money to say, oh, like it's a comfortable couch that they're sitting on, but basically hundreds of dollars for someone to say, so what I hear you say is, seriously, but we will pay someone because there aren't so many people that will really listen to us. And, and it's such what a gift it is to feel heard and understood and seen. I mean, I almost feel like we're, I see people walking around with signs on their head that say, see me, or I'm going through something hard. Don't you see people in the supermarkets with signs? Mm -hmm. Like everyone has a, a bubble on top of their head that says like, I'm in pain. I, I need something, you know, I, I need human connection. Like that is really the number one basic need. And, and people are feeling very, very alone. And we could blame it on COVID, we could blame it on a, a million things, but I think it's always been that people walk through this world not really feeling so connected. And, and we are very blessed to have a community like we have, but most people don't have community. Community is the, the greatest gift. When you're, in, when you're going through something great, when you're going through something hard, I and mean, we go back to our questions, are you really happy for someone? Um, I went to an engagement party this Sunday night. Um, Ari Shabbat's daughter got engaged. It was so beautiful, like over the top, gorgeous, and the bride and the groom and the excitement and the energy. And I just like my response, like when I wrote to the, to the mother of the bride afterwards, I said like, all I felt was how happy everyone was for you. Like, this is such a, a simcha, a joyous occasion for everybody. Like you just felt it. It was so much in like so much uh, joy in the air. And that's a great thing to really partake in someone's joy. And unfortunately the opposite to really be there for someone in their pain. There's nothing as precious as that. To be, to hold someone's hand through loss, through grief, through mourning, what a gift that is. So that's number three, the mirroring, okay? So we're, 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 we could do that, right, Sue? We could do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I love you. Are you mad at me? No, okay, <laughs> let's go on, move it on. Um, four, what's, what's level four? Okay, sensing. So sensing, what, what, I, what I think it means is when you're hearing, you're listening to someone, not only are you listening to the words, but you're listening to what's behind the words you're feeling the energy, you're understanding where their, their eyes darken and where their eyes sparkle. You're really, you're, you're taking in, you're using your, what we say like Bina Yatera, like your, your womanly intuition, which God gave us, we have an extra dose of intuition because we could sense things, we're sensing, okay? We're really feeling the whole thing. So we're seeing what's not being said also. Okay, that's like, that's a very high level. Right? You really need to, to lean on your intuition for that, but we could all do that. We could do that with our kids. Like when, when someone comes home and they say, you know, and you say, how was your day? And they say, fine, right? You know, my thing for fine, it's feelings inside not expressed. <laughs> What's fine? What's fine? I hate it when they give one word answers. I want all the pain. I want all the gory and all the guts and all the bullying. Tell me what happened, the good and the bad and the ugly. Right? I really want to connect with you. So tell me, but when someone just gives you a one word in the supermarket, you should really follow up with let's meet for coffee. Cause you know that there's so much more going on behind what you could see. But what happened? Right. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then the fifth level, transforming. Mm -hmm. So transforming what that means. And this is, this is like, basically, I mean, not all of us could do this. Um, 
this is a very big life coaching trick, right? So three was like, you know, therapy basically. Five is, is really giving space for someone to be themselves. It, it might not even be with words. It might literally just be listening and, and encouraging sometimes even with your eyes or your presence where, what, what does a life coach do? A life coach pulls the answers out of you. A good life coach will not tell you what to do but a life coach will encourage you and, and pull it from you because really you know what you need to do and giving you the space to transform your own life. So that's the highest level. So we could, we could bring that, that little lesson that we learned in Israel, plug it in over here with giving because obviously giving is so much more than money. Giving is of yourself, of your heart. That's what we're gonna get to when we, if we get into this book is, wait, hold on, what time is it? It's Oh, it's 10 to. It's 10 to. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's insane. What, what, yes. Even though you publicly shamed me, I'm oh, going to ask. I'm something. sorry. <laughs> Did you say I was an interrupter? <laughs> I raised my hand before I interrupted. <laughs> Deborah, do you think you're an interrupter? No. <laughs> For you? I think I. Of course you add to the conversation. <laughs> I'm an interrupter. Okay. So, Raise your hand if you're an interrupter. Okay. You know, if you, okay. It's, it's not an embarrassing thing. Okay. I don't know what it is. Confident. It's, I mean, you have so much to give. I mean, this is, I've been working on this for years. Let me just, could you hear me? If, if, it's Hannah. I have a question. Hannah, wait, hold on. Someone is speaking right now. Give me a second. Yeah. I'm an interrupter. So, and, uh, interrupter being interrupter. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> so, the last one was leader, and one of the things that I was teaching, this is going to be such a joke at this point, was <laughs> And the thing that we did this, uh, um, this one training session was on so active listening. And uh, uh, the way that I taught them was. What we had just learned was about how, how are you different on the inside than you are on the outside. And what I asked them to do with a partner was when the person said, for example, okay, I'm going to use my own. So people think that I'm outgoing, but I get very uncomfortable in a group of people that I don't know. It exhausts me. And the other person, all they can say to you is, Tell me more. Three mm -hmm. times. Three times. They're not allowed to say, oh my God, I'm the same way, which would be, which of the five things that you just said. Caring. Well, or, but I'm the same way. Is that is that not interrupting? Or do they interrupting? They can be mirroring? Or, oh my God, I know my son is just like that, but I told him to do as my problem solver. Any, any one of these, right? All you keep doing is saying, tell me more. Right. Which eventually came to either me or whoever the person was working with, whatever their problem was, coming up with your own answer. And then at the very end, of three of these, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more, whatever the thing was that the person said, how you're different on the inside than the outside, the person was only allowed not the saying exactly what the person said, not what I hear you saying, but coming up with what they said at the beginning and the conclusion that they came to. Ability, amazing. Right, and, and probably really hard to do if you're not used to it. Like to actually yes, listen no, so that you're actually to able to, I know, it's like, oh my gosh, you, you know, I need to listen. Uh -huh. Or you know, you kind of lead the way, or you want to come up with your like solution, or you're, oh my God, I'm the same as you, or whatever. Right. And it was wow. So sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, but I said, yeah, I'll tell you afterwards. Um, okay, yes. Wait, wait, Eve, can oh, I? Hannah, you, Hannah, you want to speak up for a question? Yeah, real quick, real yes. quick. What, I know I'm an interrupter, but with this Zoom, I can't hear what anybody is saying, but. It's so hard to interrupt on Zoom, Hannah. It's time for you to come back. I am, I am, I am. Listen, my question yeah. is, 
Um, you guys I, here? Okay. Can you I'm gonna repeat can, it? Speak up. Okay. I know yeah. somebody, I know somebody in my community here that she's always interrupting and makes no sense. So what do you do? Do you tell her to shut up? I mean, I know you do. <laughs> See it as it is, girl. Someone's always no. interrupting you, tell them to shut up. So I think there's a way to, to say things nicely, but but I'll, I'll tell you as someone, I, I when I, let's say I'm let's say I'm speaking in front of 200 people, right? I mean, like let's say I'm gonna be on a momentum trip it's coming up soon. And it's actually, this is an art. This is something that I, I, I've had many questions like with Adrian, to Lori, like, how do you do this? Like, how do you, there's, you have to go, like you're on, you're rushing on time and there's five people waiting. So there's actually an art to shutting people up. <laughs> so, so what it is, is, and, and how I feel and actually what, um, what this lady taught me, um, Robertson Esther oh, Young Grace, because I, I actually met her a couple of times in my life. And there was always a lineup of people because mm -hmm. to get a blessing from her was gold. Cool. There was something just incredible about her. It was worth waiting for. So I would wait in line and she had this way of in one minute or less because it felt like a beautiful long blessing, but maybe, maybe it was just a very short thing. Maybe it was 10 seconds or less. But what she would do was she would hold your hand. She would look into your eyes. You were the only person that, that you were, everyone else faded away. It was you and her. And she said, what is your Hebrew name? And she put her hands on your really? head and she gave me a blessing. I will never forget that blessing. That's it. So maybe we could do that. Maybe we could replicate that. A friend of mine, Hannah, who lives in Portland, Aviel Brodkin, she's a, a tremendous woman. She's the principal of our, our Jewish day school. She's the rabbit. She's just incredible. She's one of my dear friends. And she had this hack that I learned from her. And I don't use it as much because I really want to hear all the details. And I really like, you know, I'm not so good at boundaries, but she was very boundary. And there were always a lot of people around her. So what she would do is when she would see someone, a kid who just came back from summer camp, she hasn't seen her student in two months. She would say, what was the highlight of your trip? She gave a short question. So it's not open-ended because we don't have time sometimes I just get right to the, give me the highlight. Tell me, let's cut through all the garbage, right? And let's get straight to the meaning. Let's, let's pull off the bandage in a relationship. How are you? How, how is, you know, a friend of mine lost, had a tremendous loss this year, right? So I've spoken about my friend, Tony Jaffe, who lost her only child to an overdose. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I felt that I had to do the ring around the rosy. Every time I spoke to her, I had to speak to her for 45 minutes before even asking her how she's doing, because I was so scared. So first, let's talk about the weather and let's talk about everything else under the sun. And finally, she said to me, Eve, I know that you're busy and I know you want to really get to, you want to, you want to hear how I'm doing. So she actually gave me words. She said, tell me, how is your grief today? And I'm telling you what a gift she gave me because I was so scared of, I wanted to know and I wanted to support her, but I felt like I had to, you know, kind of talk about everything else before getting to that. But really all she needs from me is to support her in her grief. So she gave me those words. So Hannah, I think we could, we could kind of work on, on using our, using our intuition, using our strengths, our weaknesses to, to kind of, you know, we're all different. We're all different. I, I wouldn't tell anyone to shut up, but you might need to say, let's let's carry this conversation elsewhere. Okay. So um, I do want to teach a little bit of Rabbi Dessler before we go. And I don't know what time it is. Hold on. It's, it's 12 o'clock already. Can we have five minutes of, of, of some learning because I have, I have someone that's here for the first time and she's going to think we just like joke around all week and we really learn. We have two new people. Oh, that's right. We have two new people. We really learn. We really cover some ground. Three new ones. That's right. You've never been here, buddy. Okay, so so um Adrian, while I'm finding yeah. Oh, what are the is that the levels of, of listening, right? Levels of listening. Okay. And and really, I mean, but it's so much more than listening. It's the greatest gift right? It's the, it's the levels of giving, I would say. By the way, there are other levels of giving, which we've spoken about in the past. Does anyone want to run through the levels of giving? Because they're like, when we're talking about charity, if we could go back to that form of giving, there's actually many levels. Does anyone know this? I have eight levels over here. Does, okay, let's just start. Should we start from lowest to highest or highest to lowest? 
What's the highest? Okay, so anonymous giving is the highest level. Yeah, yeah. Give, like teach a man to fish. Give someone the tools to get on their own feet. So I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what Maimonides says. I'm just gonna spend two minutes on this, but this is a whole class of its own. So um so that that one teaching a man to fish or giving a loan for someone to get on their feet, right? Finding someone a job, right? Something like that, helping someone in an honorable way. So that's that's level one. Level two is um is giving anonymously where the giver and the receiver both don't know where it's coming from, okay? So for example, if you put a coin in a charity box, that, that's that level. You don't know where it's gonna go to and no one knows where it came from, okay? So that's total anonymous. Um, the third level is when the giver knows, right? And, but, but, but the, the receiver doesn't know where it's coming from. So for example, the giver, for example, puts money in an envelope and slides it under a door. Okay, that's like privately. And that is, there's no embarrassment on the, on that, on the receiving end. The fourth level is the, the, the getter knows, the receiver knows, but the giver doesn't know. So for example, um, like someone that has, um, like a bag on their back that says, help yourself, okay? Which probably is not so common, but meaning, <laughs> so meaning the, the receiver knows where it's coming from. I mean, there must be another way of doing this and I, I can't think of an example. Can you think of an example? The little library. Oh, oh that's, that's a good one. The halas, that is a good one. Meaning the receiver knows, like they know that they were baked it probably in my kitchen, right? I have no idea who comes and takes. I just know when Judy tells me, you need to get moving. If you need to make another batch of challah, I'm like, okay, great. So, but that that's true. So people know where it's coming from, but but I don't know who's taking and I don't want to know. Okay, good. Um, number five, fifth level is when both know, okay? So, so there's, you know, someone's asking and someone's getting and you don't shame him but that is a level, that's level five. Um, number six, going down, okay? Six is someone has to ask, which is kind of embarrassing. This, by the way, this, this uh, campaign that we're doing is so out of my comfort zone. I can't even tell you. It's the first time that I'm fundraising for any cause. And the truth is, I never felt, I've been a, a part of so many organizations before and I've had jobs where we had to fundraise, but I actually never felt, I never felt the cause was worthy of me putting my relationships on the line. I never felt like I could ask, but for the very first time, I feel like this is so, what we have over here is we could just keep going and we could do so much more. So it's the first time that I feel like this is worthy. It's not, and it's, and once you get in your mind, when you really believe in a cause, by the way, you, you feel like when I'm asking friends today, friends in Portland, friends in Denver, my family in Israel and South Africa, I'm saying, guys, you want to support this. I'm going to give you the opportunity to partner with me in this amazing work. And I really, really believe it. It's the first time that I actually believe what I'm saying. Like, this is really worth investing into. So that's, that's an incredible thing. <clears throat> but that's when both knows. Giving yeah, after so if you're asked. Okay. Um, number seven is giving less than he needs. Like someone says, and I've had this conversation many times, but by the way, last, last night I made, a, I made a big ask from a friend of mine from Philadelphia. And she's like, how much do you need? And I said, 15,000. And she's like, let me think about it. And she got back to me. I mean, I've never done this in my life. I'm like petrified. I'm like peeing in my pants. I'm like, ah! And she got back to me and she's like, we really believe in your work. And we're going to give you 5,000, mm -hmm. right? But I could have asked her for 500 and she could have said, I'll give you a hundred, right? Mm -hmm. So I asked very big because this is not about me. I'm going to get out of my fear. And I'm like, this is about the Jewish people. And if you, if you want to partner with me, she wants to partner with me, it turns out. So, so I guess that would be level seven. So you, you get an ask and you give, but less than you're asked for or less than is needed, but, but that's still huge, 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 huge. Um, and doing it with a smile. Okay. So you're giving less, like, you know, I'm not going to give all that. She said, let's see what happens. Maybe next year we'll up it. 
right? Mm -hmm. But that's the biggest smile. Like it's so encouraging. And then number E is giving, but with a, a and who knows Yiddish here, like a forbidden upon him, like, like a bitter face. Like I could see my grandmother saying like a forbidden upon him, like, just like you're not, like you're not fully happy or okay like let me okay let me just get my pocket oh, okay fine when is this charity event over like whatever it's just like you and you feel it it really really comes across how you give makes all the difference when it comes with a i could only give 18 dollars right now but i i'm cheering you on and i'm so proud of you that it, it's literally it gives you it's it's like uh nourishment yeah Mm. Some granola bars. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I got, so, I got around that. I felt that feel that same way, but I have a McDonald's gift card in my oh, wow. um, um, So when I'm driving, at least it's going towards food. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just keep I just keep a few of them in my center console. <laughs> Because I have trouble giving money too, because you know where it can go. Um, Guys, I'm just, I just want to end. I, I, we only have a few more minutes, but I do want to get to some of the teachings of, of our sages. And I want to bring in Rabbi Dessler. So just give me two minutes and then we can stay as long as you want. I want to hear all your, all your thoughts. So bringing in Rabbi Dessler. Okay. So he says, your external motions stimulate internal ones. Okay. That's why. This whole exercise, I mean, God could have made the world, everyone self-sufficient, but God made holes for us to fill, for us to fix, for us to do tikkun olam, right? There is someone in need in your neighborhood so that you could fill that need. It's literally for you. So you cannot close your eyes to it. If you see it, you need to, you need to act on it. So Rabbi Dessler, he, he speaks about this act of generosity awakening love and fostering the soul trait of generosity this is literally for ourselves to grow mm -hmm. so the guidance that the Musar movement is giving us is that by accustoming yourself to giving and developing the habit of giving eventually your heart will catch up and oh. you will become a generous a more generous and loving natured person so what he's seeing is our heart follows the deed, right? I think Neely Cousin spoke about this. Like if you, if you're, um, what did she say? She said something on the trip about how do you, be, like, if you don't give, you're not a generous person. If you don't observe, you're not an observant person. If you don't, um, I don't know, just X, Y, Z. She kept giving ideas of like, we want to be, we want to have lots of good traits. But how do we actually, how do we take a trait, an idea, and bring it into our lives? So he is saying here that the, the heart will follow after the deed. So you might not feel like you want to give. I love how Julie put it. Give until it hurts a little bit, mm -hmm. until you feel it. Then that, you know, if it's so easy, come easy, go. You're not feeling it. And this comes back to everything else in Judaism. Like, let's say prayer, for example. If you didn't feel a prayer in your heart, you did not pray. It's not lip service. It's not just like doing a job. It's, it's letting it transform you. And really every single observance, every single mitzvah, every single good deed is supposed to transform our soul. So he is saying over here that the, the heart follows the deed. If you want to become a generous spirit, you just have to first do the action. You might need to do it a thousand times over until you finally feel like it's it's taking taking 
it, it's really becoming part of you, right? That's why if you have a thousand coins, you should rather give it to a thousand different charities than in one lump sum, because we want to be like, you know, to kind of exercise the muscle of being a giving person, okay? So um, lots more to say. I'm, I'm really skimming through, but I really recommend reading this whole chapter. The Hebrew word for giving, okay, binatnu, is a palindrome. Thank you so much. I know you're going straight to the airport. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you. I'll see you guys. Thank you. Safe travels. So it's a palindrome. That means that it could be read backwards and forwards. What that really means, what that is telling us, what is it? When you give, you get. Maybe not financially, right? If you're giving money, what are you getting back in return? Right, heart, pleasure, joy. It is so great to be on the on the giving end. What a joy that is, right? And and that is the flow of generosity. That has to be the flow because really, really, to be a giver, you know, one of the questions was, could you receive? That's also a big part of it. You giving sometimes is receiving. You cannot only only give and not receive. There has to be a flow. Yes, yes. And that's also a bunch of the questions were, could you give to yourself, right? Could you love yourself? If you can't, chances are things are going to get blocked somewhere, okay? Um, so I think we're going to end here. Um, maybe I'll just end with um, one or two quotes. So this is, um, here's, a, here's a great quote. If you want to bond yourself to loving your friend, give to him for his benefit okay if you want to love someone give to him that is that's how we could like build our love and and i'll just one more quote over here to end as a with a powerful bang for this incredible day so so over here in the book of proverbs the quote is that charity saves someone from death sadaka tatsil mimave charity Okay, and, and to find that as you will, with all the ways that we spoke about, charity is so powerful that it could save someone from death. That's what our, the book of the Proverbs says. It literally could change your decree. And we know that when we come towards the high holidays, we say there's three things that could really help us. Teshuvah, repentance, prayer, and charity. Again, and, and I can think of a dozen other ways that the Torah tells us how, how important charity is. We have, there's three pillars that the world stands are, on, and one of them is charity. It is so, so fundamental. It's so important in how we hold our communities together. Charity. So, so this week, um, it, it just so happened to be, just so happened to be that not only are we doing our charity campaign, but literally every other organization in Chicago is also doing their charity campaign. Mm -hmm. Literally every school, the, the Kihila funds, my son's yeshiva, da, da, this, that, whatever. I must have gotten a dozen requests yeah. for charity. And it's just so interesting because I almost feel so now, okay, and, and they all finished yesterday. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, and here we are, L'chaim Center, like we raise our goal, yay, you know? And I just feel, so I wrote to my friend, I said, I know you've probably given a dozen times this week because we all have extended ourselves for every institution. And people just said, Eve, like what a pleasure to give to be able to give. And I said, like, I'm really embarrassed to ask you because I know you probably gave to the yeshiva and you probably gave to the chesed funds and you probably gave to all these things. And, and people are saying, no, this is what we love doing. Mm. So it's just so beautiful to see the chesed and the energy in the Chicago community. Chicago is known for generosity and you truly, truly feel it in every way. Um, we, we still want to have, um, um, what's it called? Like a, like a class trip, so to speak. Do you remember? Uh, Regina was going to help me. We were we were thinking during the summer to go on a class trip and go visit all the charity organizations, like the soup kitchens and the Chesed Fund and um, the Gemachs, right? Do you guys know what the word Gemach is? We spoke about that. It's hard to say. Gemach is an acronym for the Hebrew term Gemilut Chesed or Gemilut Chesedim, which means loving kindness. And there are about a hundred uh, organizations, free loan places in Chicago for just about anything that you may need that is just free, just, just from an outpouring of love. 
And I'm really proud to be part of this community. And I think a class trip, so to speak, will be great in really understanding what we are sitting on here, whether it's helping support brides that need help, or, or I mean, there's a tablecloth gemach, there's a wedding gown gemach, there's, I mean, there's, there's a chair gemach, like who yeah. knew? Um, there's so much available in the city and it's just out of an outpouring. Well, there, there is a list. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. There's, there, there are dozens of places that are just like run by people that just want to give. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, we did last week, but you guys want to, well, yes or no. I mean, some are back. So let's let's do that. So let's we're gonna end this class over here. So I'm sending love, Hini Dean. How you doing? And Deborah is interrupting again. And Deborah is. I love you. Deborah wants to know who's who in this class. So let's 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 do that. Well, let's do that. Let's and and maybe maybe we could all just go around real quick because because I you know this class keeps growing and changing and I love it so so good. So let's. Do you guys want to start? Amy, you want to start? Wow, awesome. and and um, Amy sounds going to have a bar mitzvah here, so stay tuned. So exciting! Yeah. Yay. Wow. Welcome. Welcome. I hope you come back. Amazing. <laughs> it would be my dream to take to take Judy, by the way. Judy, it would be my dream to take Judy. Oh. How's the high? <laughs> We're going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Really nice. I know, I know. It's so hard. It's so hard to, to hold on to. Some of the ladies said, like, did that really happen? Like, right? And, and one of the ladies created a beautiful video, like a montage, and, and it really, like, I almost was thinking like, did that really happen, right? Because mm -hmm. it almost feels so far away. You come back down and you're like, yeah, life, life hit, hits you. Eve, Eve, sorry for interrupting again, but we cannot hear what people are saying. Oh, so That's okay, that's okay. I'm okay. coming back June 7th and I will send in a donation today. And I want to, class was great. And I would, I am looking forward to meeting all the new people. So, okay, good. We can't wait to have you here. Yeah, uh, I'm coming back this Sabbath. It was a Tuesday, but I'll be on Shabbat. I'll be. Oh, Shabbat. I can't wait to see you. I cannot wait to see you. It's been a long Bye winter without you. Bye, guys. Okay, Bye -bye. who else wants to? Anyone else want to introduce? Oh. Hello. It's so nice. Yeah, mother. <laughs> Say the prayer for her if you didn't hear any. Do you want me to send it to you or do you have it? It's so beautiful. Yeah. So I'm happy to, I'll put it on our chat. Okay, I'll put it on our chat.
um, yeah, and it's never, I mean, even if we miss that exact day, we can always pray for our children. Well, it was actually yesterday, meaning like, it's like, it was it's supposed to be the day before Rosh, Rosh Chodesh Sivan, but I really believe it's still the energy. Anytime this week, it's really that energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, so whoever comes tonight, we're going to be talking about the energy of, of this month. Of, well, we'll move it into my house. We'll move it into our house. Yeah. Yeah, it's better not, better not rain. Um, anybody else want to introduce themselves? Any, yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I love that you're still coming. Yeah. And, and there's so much to learn. I feel like we're just getting started, right? Um, we, we're actually changing our schedule of classes for the summer. So stay tuned. Julie, maybe, I don't know if you want to speak to this, but I'm saying we're going to be changing our class schedule for the summer and you'll be sending that out soon. Do we have, are we? Yeah, I'm going to keep going on this Tuesdays. Yeah, we're just going to keep going with this because it's going good. But, but there's going to be some more classes and some new classes. My husband has a new class that's really interesting on Thursday nights. It's called Headlines. Mm -hmm. And um, every week we'll speak about different contemporary issues in the Jewish world. Mm -hmm. That So whatever is like hot off the press, um, he's going to he's gonna try to give perspective on. So that's a really great class. That's Thursday evening. It's available on Zoom and in person here at the center. Um, and then do we have some other new classes that are happening. Okay, fine. Yeah, fall. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just not teaching. Okay, And Lauren class on Thursday. Thursdays. So we're, we're probably going to change. We're probably going to change that around a little bit. So we're in conversation with Laura about that. And I'm, I'm not sure it's on Thursday at 11.15. So, so we're just deciding if a, we should change the topic. Okay, because we because it's a partial class. We already have a partial class um, on Saturday. Very different. Okay, so so how about we take a poll from the women that go what topic they want to do? Yeah, so we'll talk about that, but we're definitely gonna. Right. Mm. Yeah. We're also, yeah, we might switch it to Zoom if we don't get enough people in person. So let's, whatever, you guys are the raw raws. So maybe you want to get some more excitement about it or tell people about it. If we get more people, then she'll come in person. But that's that's kind of where, where we are with that. And then David and Ali will continue teaching on Zoom and, um, yeah, we're open. We're also very, what? We're we're also open to to new topics. So as as we you know change things around for the upcoming uh, season of fall, like we're probably going to add maybe we'll add a teacher. So if anyone has something in mind that they want to learn, we're very yeah open to it. Which goal? This big fundraising effort. I mean, the the big goal is two seventy five. That's the annual goal. Two fifty. I know. We're upping our game. Thank you, thank you, everyone that's donated, and thank you, everyone, for being a part of it and spread the word. So that's it. See you guys. Yeah, Julie will tell us. That's amazing. We're at 38%. That's huge. 
Yeah, we just started. I mean, we've been working on it for a long time, but but we have another day. Yay. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so not right away. No, I'll probably stay here a little bit. Okay. I'll be home in a half hour. Oh, okay. I have to go pick up. She said everything that comes out of my mouth is relevant and don't make fun of myself. You. Just say it. <laughs> yeah, I need to yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure none of these are the ones? They're, they're, but, they're, but I think we have a whole set of them. I thought so. Hey, how you doing? I love oh gosh. Good to see you. Yeah, please have. What is it? I said. Oh, cheese babkas that I made. What's a cheese babka? Yeast. Oh, it's so good. I mean, it's like it's like a babka, like a yeast dough with cheese. I'm gonna say sure. Come see them. Come see them. It's so funny. My my microphone is on. Basically, I've been recording and recording. Oh, gosh. Okay. What is I, I don't know anything about this. Oh, but what? Well, the fire. Oh, like I walked oh, in, I didn't know where I was walking in. Oh my gosh. It's here. Let me just end this meeting because not.